So as many of you may know, I've been working on this chicken coop behind me for a long time now. And I have a little bit of a dilemma in the barn where I'm temporarily keeping the chickens. And that dilemma is that I got too many. We just harvested a bunch of chickens for meat. That helped. We only did about 20 chickens so far. We still have about 10 more to do. And uh, what I decided to do is finish one coop of this massive custom ultimate chicken house gazebo chateau palace whatever we're calling it i need to finish one coop and i'm going to do that today i need to finish one coop so that i can move some pullets and some cockerels so that's what we're going to do today how you doing elvis I don't know if hanging out with these ducks ever get old. They're just a bunch of crazy quacksters. <laughs> Scared of their own life. MJ, what are you doing up there, buddy? Look at MJ, guys. He jumped up on top where Elvis always sits. MJ, <laughs> you better not be starting any trouble with, uh, with Elvis Presley, okay? Oh my God, he flew down. Look at this. MJ against Elvis. This is not good, folks. MJ's bad, that's why. All's quiet over here, Red. Hey, Big Red. All your ladies, everything's all quiet and calm on this side. Everything is a little bit crazy on this side. MJ, let's go. MJ, let's go. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Let's go. Jump. You little stinker. You little stinker. Tell him, Elvis. Don't you come back in here, MJ. I just threw you out of here. Let's go. Let's go. Get off the feed can. Get out of here. Get out of here. What are you doing? Ah. You stay there. Stay there, okay? I'm gonna bust my hump today and I'm gonna get that coop done. Done done so that I can put those young pullets and cockerels in there. It's gonna be cool. And it'll be nice to finally get a piece done. The only thing that's not done is the shingles on the roof, but that's okay. It's got plywood, a little bit of water's gonna drip through if it rains. That's okay. <laughs>
with this chicken wire stuff, I like to get it as tight as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, but getting it a little bit tight helps. I always start off by doing a little bit on that corner, doing a little bit on the opposite corner, and then pull it tight on the bottom angle. So that way it gets tight on this side and tight on this side. It's not perfect, but it makes for a nice tight fit. I'm just using a T50 staple gun. It's pneumatic, it's with air, that's why it's so powerful. You don't want to be using a push-in stapler because they don't the staples don't go into the wood properly. Chicken wire, it's always a pain. Hardware cloth is even worse. But once it's up, see, it's a nice taut finish. So this is going to be a good divider for the chickens. That's good guys, I got this whole wall panel done. This is one of the dividers that's going to divide the individual coops. Remember, I'm trying to finish this one individual coop so I can move some chickens in here. So that's why I stopped doing everything else that I'm doing to try to focus on this one coop. Because the chickens, they're... Uh, there are too many in there so I need to separate them and I have no other place to put them so I'm trying to finish this. I got this little trap door rigged up and this can slide up like this. I'll put a little hook here to hold it and then if ever I want the chickens to have a bigger space if I'm let's say I'm not breeding or anything I can just let them roam in and around these two coops and even the other coop and they'll be fine and I'll do the same thing in the in the runs on the outside too. Looking good. Looking good here. So the front window, I have the nice chicken wire. The side wall, I have wood down here. Nice solid chicken wire up here. We have the front entrance window. I have everything boarded in. I got the soffits covered. The only thing I have to do now is put a window in here and put some roosts in and then I need to cover the nesting boxes because these are young pullets and cockerels and I don't want them nesting in there because they'll just be pooping in there so I gotta just put a plank of wood to cover that and I'm gonna build some roosting bars over there gotta put a door in here this is my man door and it's just gonna be a simple 2x2 two two frame with a couple of cross beams and chicken wire, so it's gonna be cool. That there, guys, is a plexiglass that I'm using for the windows of the outer exterior windows of the coops. And I'm trying to finish off that one coop, as you know. So it's very difficult to cut that stuff. You can't just use a saw because the plastic starts to get hot and then it leaves like a trail, like a skin. Um, so the way you're supposed to do it is with this little tool here. I don't know if you've ever seen anything like it. It's just like that. It's got a little hook on the end. And basically, you score the plastic. You keep scoring it and scoring it and scoring it and scoring it and scoring it until it's made a deep gouge. And then you just bend the plastic and it pops. Hopefully. I have ruined a couple of these in my days. Um, by not scoring it enough and then it cracks in the wrong way. Um, but let's give this a go. This is not a very, very thick plexiglass because plexiglass is really, really expensive. It's more expensive than wood. But what am I going to do? 
You're gonna get like a real window with a proper frame. That's hundreds of dollars. You have to pre-drill before you screw and you have to drill the hole very, very slowly. You can't push it too hard like you can with wood. Because sadly, if you do that, you're, uh, <laughs> it's gonna crack. Just trying to get it perfectly centered here. After you finish drilling this stuff, eh, you have to kind of get rid of all the edge because, like I said, it's plastic, so it melts when you're drilling it. As it starts to get warm, it melts. So there's like a little edge here. So if I put that back on and then start to screw down, because there's a little bump there, it, it'll crack. So you need to get rid of it. it. You don't need a file or nothing. I'm just using my fingernails. Not that anybody would ever have to know this, but it's just something I've learned over my years on using plexiglass. If you don't get rid of that little burr, you're in trouble. I'm using a real flat screw too. It's flat right on the bottom here. You don't want to use a beveled edge. Just building a simple frame here for a roost. Although I don't think these younger birds are going to roost yet, but I don't want to have to interfere and interrupt them when it comes time for them to want to roost. And I don't want to put a bar coming straight down because I want to make it easy for me to clean out the bedding. Eh? I don't want anything sitting on the ground. So that's why I'm going with this kind of design. Sun's going down, guys. Before I get these chickens transferred over, I'm gonna put ducks and the geese away because the sun is going down. <laughs> All the geese are waiting right here for me. I don't even have to call them in. They're right here by the end of the end of the fence. All I gotta do is get them in. Let's 
go, chickens. I think these chickens are gonna enjoy this coop. Although it's only one of the seven coops, but I got her done. And they're moved. And they're living life in the new coop. Anyways, folks, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're interested in how the rest of this chicken house build goes, don't forget to click that subscribe button. And don't forget to pound that like if you like the video. Really appreciate you watching, guys. You guys take care, okay?